Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If you have been raised with Christ. In other words, it's just like saying if you have been really born again. Like you hear me say many times in this church, if you have been really born again, it's unfortunate that we have to say that. If you have really been born again, if you have really been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things that are in heaven. Not bigger cars and houses. God will give you all that you need on this earth, but you shouldn't be seeking for them. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek the king, heavenly things. The other earthly things that you need will be added to you. You will not suffer lack. I can honestly say before God what I've said many times. That for 47 years of my life, since I was born again, my turning was radical. I didn't make a right turn. I turned an about turn. Such an about turn that as soon as I gave my life to Christ, I said, Lord, if you want me to serve you, I'll quit my amb earthly ambition to be a naval officer and quit all that and I'll serve you if you want me. I turned around and as far as I can remember, I never sought earthly things after that. Have I suffered? I've never starved. My children have never starved. God's taken care of me. He's taken care of my family. Because I, w I wanted to be a living demonstration that if you seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness, the other things will be added to you. Every one of you in your town, in your village, must be a living demonstration to the non-Christians around you that you spent your life seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness first and the other earthly things, God just threw it into your lap. You didn't even seek for it. God can do that. He gave you a job and you didn't seek for it. He gave you more than enough for your family's needs even though you didn't seek for it. Your heart was devoted to God's kingdom. Imagine if all of you sitting here, at least from today onwards, start living like that. I tell you, we'll have a revival in our churches. The kingdom of God will come with power into our local churches. And those who don't like it, they will leave. Thank God they will leave and not waste our time. They will go and join some other church where they can listen to the prosperity gospel and make money on the earth. They can, they're welcome to go. But we are determined to be a witness for Christ. We are determined to progress in likeness to Christ. If you are risen with Christ, we want to, people in our midst who are seeking the things that are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God, setting their mind. Look at this verse. Setting their mind on the things above and not on the things of earth. And here is my favorite illustration of that, the rubber band. Many of you have heard me use that. You know, if I tie a rubber band here, assume this is heavenly things, and down here, in the top of this pulpit is earthly things. I tie the rubber band here, but I need to stretch it to touch earthly things many times a day. I have to eat, drink, get my children educated, feed them, clothe them. A mother has got many, many things where she has to stretch it and mind about throughout the day. But once all those earthly things are done, eight hours a day, the rubber band is stretched to do our earthly work. But once it's all done and we have finished our day's work, the rubber band is released. It goes, springs back up here to heavenly things. That is the true disciple of Jesus Christ. And tomorrow, again, he'll have to stretch it down to 101 earthly things for many, many hours a day. But once all that is over, springs back to, earthly thing, to heavenly again. But do you know how most believers' lives are, their mind? The rubber band is down here, down on earthly things. On Sunday morning, it is stretched for two hours to heavenly things and then released back to the earthly. By the time they reached home, it's already earthly. In fact, on the way home on their scooter or auto rickshaw, it's already gone down to the earthly things. The husband and wife are quarreling inside the auto rickshaw on their way home about something. It was only for two hours. It was stretched there. They thought they were very heavenly people. Back again. This is not Christianity. This is old covenant. Set your mind on the things above. 
and stretch it down to earthly things. Maybe for 15 hours a day, stretch it, sure. Mothers with small children have to stretch it for many hours of the day. In the middle of the night, they have to stretch it to earthly things because their babies need so much. But when it's released from that, let it spring back to the things of heaven. That's how I want my mind to be. I have to earn my living. I have to take care of my family. I have to pay taxes for my house and there are lots of things. I've got to pay tax for my car and scooter and I've got to do many, many things I have to think of. I have to stretch my mind. But when it's released, I want to be hearing what God has to say to me. And the more we live like this, the more heavenly minded we'll be. But not so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly use. No. Our head will be in the clouds but our feet will be on the earth. Our mind is set on the things of earth but we are down to earth practical. We can laugh and joke like we did this afternoon in those skits. We can enjoy it. We're not so heavenly minded that we can't crack a joke or have any sense of humor. No, we can enjoy earthly things, but our mind is set on the things of heaven. Once that thing is over, we spring back to heavenly things, and it's perfectly natural for us to have our mind. This is the message of John the Baptist. The kingdom of heaven is near. What a short ministry he had. 